This time on the show, Packet Captures on Android. Mike Kershaw, aka Dragorn, joins us to talk about his rootless Android PCAP app, then backing up Ubuntu the easy way, plus apt tips, pseudo aliases, and the return of black. This segment is brought to you by Crash Plan. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. It's your weekly dose of Tech Morse. And we hope you had a wonderful holiday. Oh, is that what that's hearing? Yeah, I guess yeah. so. Hey, the world didn't end. That's cool. As long as the world didn't end, hello, you are seeing this next Thursday. If you're watching this, the internet is still here. Yay! Majora's Mask was wrong! Majora's Mask? Yeah, didn't you see the thing uh, that I tweeted last week? It was uh, really cool. It was like the end of the world as we know it thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was kind of cool. Uh, it had that fine. like eerie background noise. You ever play that game? Majora's Mask? Are yes, you kidding? It's on one of the originals. The Zelda is so good. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yes. Um, so, what are we up to today? Well, we are going to take one of these and one of these. Hmm. That's a Nexus 7 because you can't tell they all look the same. Uh, and we're going to make them all do the thing. Oh, really? Yeah, well, uh, Dragorn, uh, you know him from Kismet. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we ran into him at ShmooCon and then again at Tor Camp. And he's been working on porting all of the Kismet goodness over to Android. And Very cool. uh, yeah, he's finally got this uh, sweet little app out there. It's for, you know, packet capturing on Android. And so basically he's written support or ported support for like an alpha radio running the Realtek 8187L uh, over to Android um, so that it actually can do like monitor mode or promiscuous nice. mode. And you know, using that you can go ahead and generate packet capture files and put those into your Wireshark and your TCP mm -hmm. dumps, your cloud charts okay, and cool. things of that nature. It should be really fun. Coolest thing is totally rootless, packet sniffing without root. I love it. That's awesome. So why don't we just go ahead and get right into that? Okay. See you on the other side. You guys know we love Wi-Fi on Hack5, and if there's two gold standards about Wi-Fi, it's one of these and Kismet. What if you've got one of these? That's where Dragorn comes in. How are you, Dragorn? Doing well. It is so good to see you virtually here in studio. Hello, everyone. <laughs> You've survived Sandy, and, uh, and through it, done a little bit of coding. Um, let's talk about Android meeting... Uh, meeting Kismet, the love story, if you will. Yeah, so uh, since, pretty much since Android came out, people have been asking when will Kismet run on it. Uh, unfortunately, the answer is not quite yet, but we're really close to it. And what we have as a sort of a precursor to that is PCAP capture on Android. So you can do raw monitor mode with a USB card. I actually saw you demoing kind of a hack job of Kismet running at uh, on an Android device at, what was it, ShmooCon earlier this year. Uh, how is that, what was the inspiration behind that? And how has the code evolved from that to what you have now? So yeah, that was that was a complete hack job. I still have that code and it will eventually, it's what eventually evolved into the Android PCAP project. And then now that we have reliable PCAP on Android, we'll be able to turn that into piping it into Kismet again. So. so so with Android PCAP, what were your kind of goals with that project? What you set out to accomplish? It sounds a lot easier to pallet than the full-blown Kismet suite. Yeah, the idea was just to be able to capture PCAP data uh, from, from a handheld, you know, tablet or a phone, and be able to save it as a standard PCAP file and then use it with Wireshark or, uh, or IPA or CloudShark or any of the other PCAP tools. Or you could feed it back into Kismet itself on a, on a PC. And was this your first, um, you know, attempt at uh, porting software that's typically found on x86 over to the Android platform? And how was that experience? Uh, so, so Kismet, the, the original Kismet port last winter, which which didn't work very well, was definitely my original attempt to port stuff to Android. Uh, since then, it's, it's gotten refined a lot. What had to happen is since Android, um, if you're not root, which it's not good to encourage users to... to to have to be to run any of your tools. So if you're not root, you can't really uh, access the built-in NIC and you can't do custom drivers. But what you can do with newer versions of Android is access uh, USB from user space. So it's sort of the equivalent of libUSB on a PC. So does this tool, the Android PCAP tool, actually require root on Android here? Uh, no. No, it'll run with no extra privileges other than USB access. and. Uh, it, it lets you uh, talk directly to the, the Wi-Fi card over USB in user space with the Android APIs. So it's a port of the kernel 
8187 drivers to run inside Java user space on Android. Which okay. So you talk about uh, the, the 8187 drivers. Um, in fact, that's what we have here. It's an Alpha AWUS 036H, kind of the gold standard in, in all sorts of Wi-Fi fun, as, as well, at least in the 2.4 spe uh, gigahertz spectrum. Um, I've just plugged this into a uh, off-the-shelf, you know, Nexus 7, and everything is good to go. It sees the the real tech, and I can start channel hopping and logging. Um, why the 8187? And what other chipsets were you looking at, and you know what were the fun details there? Uh, the eighty one eighty seven, pretty much because it's in the alphas, and everybody loves the alphas. <laughs> nice. So how how can you not? If you're going to pick something to start supporting, start supporting that one. Uh, another big factor in it was it doesn't have any external firmware files. Mm -hmm. uh, you pretty much just plug it in and it goes. So I didn't have to figure out how to port all of the firmware uploading code. What do you mean by that? What, you're saying that there was like an existing kernel module you were able to implement, or, or what do you mean? Right, well, so the code is, is derived from the, the Linux kernel module for the driver, uh, but a lot of the, the Wi-Fi cards need an extra firmware file that you need to download. Uh, that on Linux goes in like libhotplug. Oh, uh, that okay. gets uploaded automatically. So that's a whole other piece of code that has to has to upload the firmware to the, to the USB card and then let it reinitialize, and then it's a Wi-Fi card. So uh. picking one that's popular and doesn't have that problem was uh, important. Well, this one's quite popular and you know it just pops up. It says RTL 8187 BVB and then I get a V1 plus RTL 8225. Is that like another chipset that will work with it? Uh, well, inside the 8187 are a couple of different uh, control chips. Uh, there's a different EEPROM chip for different models and whatnot. So that's just sort of, that's sort of an example of more information than you probably needed coming out of the program, but, uh, <laughs> but it, it, it was part of, part of the debugging process as well, plugging in you know, as many different 8187s as I could find and seeing which ones actually worked. Yeah, well, hey, that's kismet for you. you know, more information than you require. I love it. Uh, <laughs> what about actually plugging it into your uh, to Android device? Uh, what, do, what do you have to have as well as, as uh, far as cables are concerned? I've got like a OTG adapter here, but uh, what else works? Uh, you need, yeah, uh, for all of them, you'd either need an OTG adapter or you need one of the few tablets that are out there that have a full sized USB host port. I believe Samsung makes one, and I think Asus makes one where it's, it's an Android system, but it has a full sized port like a laptop would have. And with those, you can plug right in. Otherwise, you need the OTG cable, which tells the, the micro USB port to go into host mode. Nice. And so you're able to. What, Let's talk about modes. Uh, you know, obviously you've got RF mon down, or else you wouldn't be able to monitor traffic and capture that that packet capture. Uh, what about other things like, you know, uh, are, are you able to inject? Can you do host mode and master mode and, and ad hoc and all of those others? And 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 even if you can, what of those are actually pertinent to this application? Yeah. So monitor mode is, is obviously the most pertinent there. So that was the first goal. Uh, inject mode should be possible. I just haven't written the code yet. Uh, it's really just a matter of porting. You know, I think it's three or four functions from the kernel driver and getting it, getting it running and getting it tested. I just haven't done it yet. Uh, so once that's done, hopefully we'll be able to integrate things like air crack and whatnot as Ooh. well. Uh, for, as far as master mode and ad hoc and whatnot, because we we can't use the Android uh, networking stack, so we can't. We can't use TCP IP on the Android. We can't make it look like a network interface because we're not root. We're just we're just yelling at a USB device, and we happen to get back packets that are useful to us. So theoretically, it would be possible, but you'd have to pretty much write your own TCP IP stack and then have a whole bunch of other. It would be ugly. Yeah. So I can just imagine having to write all of this, and it's all running in user space too. Is it? What's the performance like? Uh, I haven't seen any performance problems, mainly because configuring the channel and booting up the card takes a lot of a lot of operations and a lot of a lot of work. But once you're running, it's just you know, give me a packet, and it you know gives you two thousand bytes, and you go with it. Uh, it's pretty, you know, even even under high load on Wi-Fi because it's only eleven G capable, you're still getting you know not very high load for USB. Um, once we tackle an 11 n chipset, it'll be interesting to see what happens there. The the Android stack might start falling down at that point. Um, do you have but, plans for other hardware support in the future? Yeah, yeah. I, I'd like to support as many chipsets as possible. Um, it is open source, so if anybody wants to work on a driver, you know, contact me. Uh, we're looking at the the Carlnet uh, 9172, 9712, one of them. Some combination of numbers like that. It's a really common Atheros-based uh, USB 
uh, AVGN. Oh, there you go. All right. Uh, what about the, like, what are the use cases here? Because, you know, this being just like the packet capture kind of uh, functionality of the broader tool that is Kismet, uh, what do you see the use case being? How, how do you envision people to go ahead and load this on their devices and start putting it to use? Well, a lot of times if you're trying to debug a problem with Wi-Fi, uh, you know, you have a user in your office or whatever, or, you know, one of your, one of your friends or your family or whatever, keep going, you know, I keep getting disconnected. Well, there's no way to find out why you're getting disconnected from most hardware. You know, you can't go into a Netgear management page on your access point and figure out why you're getting disconnected usually. But if you can get a packet capture, you know, for five minutes, you just plug it into your, your phone that you have with you, then you can hopefully figure out what's going on then. And so the idea is you take this packet capture and now, okay, so I've got a PCAP on my Android device. What do I do with that now? Um, well, the main model would be you could uh, upload it with Dropbox or whatever and look at it on your PC with Wireshark or T-Shark or load it into Kismet there. Um, there's also CloudShark who have a public uh, web page that you can upload to, and it's basically Wireshark in a web browser. Um, and there's a secondary little tool that I wrote for Android that will let you uh, directly send a file to that and launch a, a web page. Oh, nice. Doing the PCAP. Is, is so that... you can do... I was going to so say you do deep packet uh, completely on the Android then. Oh, that's or, sweet. Well, I mean, an Android with a network connection. Right, and so this Cloud Shark program, uh, their web service, uh, uh, you can you said you've got an uploader specifically for that. Is that uh, in the Play Store? Right. Yeah, that's in the uh, that's in the Play Store as well. And it, it just it just grabs the Android send file event, and so you know from inside the PCAP capture or inside Astro or any of the file managers, you can. You can just do send PCAP file and pick CloudShark, and it'll handle doing the, the HTTP upload to their service in the background. And CloudShark works out pretty well on, like, Chrome for Android? Yeah, yeah, it works really well. On the phone, it's a bit cramped. On, like, the Nexus 7, it's perfectly usable, and on the N10, it's, you know, effectively a laptop. All right. So I have to know, if I plug this guy here into my, uh, my tablet and kind of do a little backpack guy, um, this is like a, a half watt radio. I'm gonna definitely lose some battery performance out of this, aren't I? Oh, absolutely. Um, you, you, you're kind of right now, unless you have an external battery pack for it, uh, you, you'll want to just you know run it for a couple minutes at a time. Uh, on a Galaxy Nexus phone, I've watched it kill the phone in about 20 minutes. Oh wow. Uh, but if you have a USB powered hub, uh, then that'll That'll bypass the power problems there. Uh, you can also try to use like a Y cable from a hard drive, although I find that a lot of times it uses more phone power than I'd prefer still. What, are the, and, what about, aren't there dangers in using like a Y cable in that sense because wouldn't you be applying voltage back into the, uh, I mean, it, anyway, what, oh, yeah. what kind of problems would you have? I'm no EE, I'm just saying, I've seen some issues. Yeah, no, it, it, it's... It's a little quirky. Uh, the safest option, if, you, if you're going to do it yourself with pieces, would be to get a, a powered USB hub and power that off a battery pack. And you've been working on just such a device, right? Right. I've been working on uh, basically a little board that provides a hub and power and allows you to completely split the power from the phone in a battery pack. Nice. So I actually have one of the little PCBs here. Oh, that looks so great. Oh, okay, so it's like two, two micros and a, uh, and a female A. Right, so you'd plug, uh, you'd plug your battery pack into one, your phone into the other using one of your, uh, your OTG cables that's micro to micro. And uh, then it provides a hub functionality, and there'll be a little switch that lets you pick if you're going to power uh, from the phone or if you're going to play games where you back feed power into the phone, which some actually need you to do. Ah, uh, so... so that's a really exciting device, makes a lot of sense for this, and I can already think of a ton of other different use cases. Uh, what is next on your radar as far as Android and Kismet are concerned? Uh, next on the radar is probably actually getting Kismet to run on it again. Uh, I did get the whole Kismet engine ported over before, but it was really clunky. Uh, the goal is to make it so that I don't really have to modify the Kismet code, because I'd hate to have to maintain two versions and apply all the changes to both. So I'll, I'll be making a few changes to Kismet itself to help it run better on Android. That, that would be invisible to it running on a PC. And then hopefully I'll be able to just link it into the packet capture stream we already have. Right, and, and I assume that with like the daemon running, you know, with the Kismet server running, you could you know, have like a totally different Android interface that would make more sense on touch than, say, n-curses. 
Right. Yeah. No. That, that's definitely one of the the main things as well. I wouldn't. I wouldn't try to inflict inflict end curses on someone on on an Android. <laughs> All right. Cool. So where can people uh, get involved with this if say they want to start uh, poking around with the source code um, and uh, you know just get it on their Android devices? So it's in the Android market under Android PCAP. Um, it's also on the Kismet website, uh, kismetwireless.net slash android-pcap, and that'll have uh, links to the Git repository and all the documentation and whatnot. Mike Kershaw, always a pleasure having you on. Thank you so much, uh, and Thank we you. will see you on Twitter at Dragorn, right? Uh, it's, it's actually at Kismet Wireless. Oh, at Kismet Wireless. There we go. All right, good to see you again. Take care. Good to see you. Have a good one. 464 gigabytes. That's on average how much a U.S. household stores digitally. Increasingly, our lives and our livelihoods are tied to digital storage, like photos, books, movies, TV shows, music, financial and legal documents. And while most of us have developed really good analog habits, you know, like changing the oil on our cars to getting flu shots, good digital habits are really something like backing up our hard drives that we need to learn and be proactive about. And CrashPlan from Code42 Software is an online backup software that is rocketing to the top of nearly every review and ranking because it's intelligent design, it's ultra simple, it's super easy to set up, it's transparent. Essentially, CrashPlan lets anyone set up, a, get this, a super secure private cloud in just a few seconds from Windows, Mac, and Linux. I love that, and Linux machines. Backups are continuous, so your most recent documents are securely backed up off-site on Code42's CrashPlan cloud in just seconds and access to those files within minutes from your phone or from your tablet for free. And CrashPlan uh, gives you the ability to basically back up to also an external hard drive or securely share your uh, extra hard drive space with a friend or to back up your home computer to your office computer all for free. CrashPlan is truly unlimited storage and anywhere access to your entire hard drive or from the mobile apps for $5.99 a month. Well, get this, do what I do, save yourself a bunch, get it for a year for $59.99. We encourage you to try it, go ahead and check it out for free for 30 days first. Visit crashplan.com slash hack5. That's the place you're gonna wanna go to get that 30 days free and start protecting your digital life with the easiest, most secure backup solution available. I've been using it for years, I love it.